It's Monday, 1st of June. Lou, Jackie, and Mark Faree in for Jason Parkin. And every week we're downright proud to salute great organizations, Jackie. Yes, we are. And we are glad to have another friend join us once again on the set as we talk about what's happening with Global Arts Therapy. Exactly. Executive Director of Global Arts Therapy is joining us right now. Samantha Thomas is here. And you just came back from a heck of a trip, haven't you? Absolutely, I have. I spent about uh, six weeks in Nepal working um, during the earthquake. And then I just got back from a West Africa trip. I was in Ghana for 10 days working with former child slaves. Wow. So, so very intense Six time. weeks in Nepal. You were there to see what it was like firsthand. Absolutely. I was there during the earthquake. Um, I was actually on a bus after a project with two other volunteers. And during that bus ride from East Nepal, we got to experience the earthquake. So you were in it. Yeah. Hmm. You were yeah. literally uh, in it. Literally in it. Literally wow. in it. Wow. So. so how's it different from what people are perceiving around here? Um, you know, it's kind of a, a challenging question because I'm seeing all different perceptions uh, for Iowa. Um, yeah, this is this is very much a reality. Uh, these are very real photographs. This is how things are looking. Uh, I can't directly speak for what happened after the second quake because I was fortunate enough to be arriving in Chicago, but this is actually what happened. I mean, this is the reality of the situation from the first quake. Uh, these images are, are very real. If you go out into the rural villages and even in Kathmandu, you're seeing temples destroyed, families' homes destroyed, businesses destroyed. Um, I think something that's really powerful that should be mentioned here is that although we have this mass destruction, you're seeing people try to pick up and rebuild their lives. Uh, the one great, one of many great things about Nepal is the, the people there are so strong and courageous and proud, and they really are doing all that they can to Dude, help. That's just build. rubble, isn't it? It's rubble. It's absolutely rubble. It's just atrocious. Um, there is a village called Saku that I had the pleasure of going out to, I would say, four days after the quake, and over 90 homes were completely destroyed. So thinking of a small village, old homes, and now, what will these people do? Will they just get up and move and try to rebuild somewhere else? Or will they clear away where they were and try to rebuild on the same plot of land? Uh, during that time, people were cleaning out and trying to rebuild from the rubble, kind of moving things out and getting ready to start over again. Wow. So a lot of people are living in tents. I mean, even to this day, you have people still living in tents and under tarps. And uh, right now, monsoon season is coming in. So this is a really challenging time for the whole country, not just one specific area. Everybody in Nepal is feeling a pain of this. Now, but one of the, the unfortunate things of media is that when something's breaking, we're mm -hmm. all over it. But Definitely. then we move on to the next headline. And they're still dealing with this condition right now. So it's important Absolutely. to remember what's Absolutely. happening over there to this day. Definitely, this is something that I feel everybody in Iowa can, can get involved with, can kind of stay on. Um, it's, it's everywhere, and it's going to be an aching problem for Nepal for the next three to five years at the very minimum. Uh, right after the quake hit, the Himalayan Times reported that it was gonna take about five to 10 years and about $1 billion to rebuild the country, and that was after the first quake. So now looking at the second quake and constant tremors, you, after aftershocks still happened. Right after that quake, people were still experiencing aftershocks, and they still do today. So this is very much a reality. So that was, I mean, it was an incredible quake. I mean, it changed the height of Mount Everest, for it heaven's did. sakes. And, and did it really? Yeah, it, it did. Wow. It actually did. Now, what, what was it like for you? You said you were actually in it and on a bus. So what yes. was it like for you and the people that you were, how, how were the emotions of the people that were on the bus with you? What was, that, what was that like to be in the middle of that? It was a really devastating experience. It was very challenging because there were two other volunteers uh, with me. We were all just getting back from a brilliant trip to East Nepal. We're doing all this great work, snake bite training, feeling, women. Feeling just... Yeah, feeling this great, yeah. happy feeling, like we've just worked with these two really powerful communities, and all of a sudden, the bus starts rocking, and there are rubble. There's rocks falling on the top of the bus, and really? glass is breaking out of the one of That'd the... terrifying. It was horrifying, and we were all just like, how are we, you know, we're going back to Kathmandu, and my first response was... If this is what we're feeling now, what is this, and what is Kathmandu like? If if we're feeling this on this road now, mind you, the roads are not the best in you know in winding mountains of Nepal. Uh, so you're going through and you're feeling all this rockiness, and it's like, what is it going to look like? You know, getting back. A normal trip from East Nepal to get back to Kathmandu is six hours. Mm -hmm. It took us about nine and a half, ten hours to mm -hmm. get back to to Kathmandu Valley. Um, and then getting back, it was just 
devastating. I mean, you're, you're getting in and you're seeing how terrible it is. And it, it wasn't just one specific area. Um, I know that everyone probably heard a lot about uh, Basintipur. And Basintipur in Kathmandu is where Durbar Square is, the temples, you saw the rubble. But it was everywhere. I mean, everywhere you go in the streets, you would see buildings, you would see people in distress, people sleeping outside. And it's still very much a reality to this day. And a lot of the construction in the buildings, hundreds of years old. I mean, yes, and not ready for an earthquake. Right. Um, right. I hate to say that, but if this were to happen in the United States, we'd probably be a little bit more prepared. But when you yeah. have traditional buildings that are beautiful, but not necessarily ready for an earthquake, right. what do you do? You know, you, you're facing a challenging situation, and Nepal was already dealing with so many issues as it was, and now you're talking about rebuilding an entire country. So. And you say it's important for Iowans to still remember this. How Absolutely. are we able to give back uh, so many uh, months after it's happened? How can we still think of them and give back? Definitely. There are so many great ways, and I just want to highlight a couple of them. Um, Global Arts Therapy is doing a relief uh, project right now. We're getting ready to uh, start helping out and kind of getting packages together for families and for children. Um, it's going to consist of basic medical gear. It's going to consist of some art supplies for the kids to kind of get their minds off of it because this is affecting everybody mm -hmm. from, you know, uh, all levels, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, isolation, fear, and you also have the medical issues and it's, it's just affecting everyone's life. So we're getting ready to do a huge fundraiser. Donate five bucks, 500 rupees, uh, and that equivalates to a, a care package. Five dollars can create a care package for all of these people. So. And how many are you, you going to be trying to build? Uh, we're going to try to build 200 care packages, okay. and we're going to try to take that out to one specific area. We're focusing on uh, an area called Kavre Polanchalk. That's going to be where we're focused. That's where we focused our efforts before the earthquake happened. Um, we're going to remain strong out there with these packages. So globalartstherapy.org if people want more information, mm -hmm. if they want to donate so they Definitely. can hopefully do some good over in Nepal because they still need it. Absolutely. I'll also say two more organizations that are doing some wonderful work right now. We have the Iowa Nepalese Association. Two thumbs up for those guys. They're really making a great effort to make sure that the money gets to the people and gets into the right places. And the Bhutanese community in Iowa is also doing a lot of great work. Uh, Bhutani Duke Dukey is a project that uh, uh, a wonderful man by the name of Rakesh Kafle has started and has really done a lot of great things for people in Nepal since the quake happened. Okay, so um, some organizations to check out if you'd like to continue to do some good uh, around the world. And see Definitely. if we can help out as well. Well, thank you for being Absolutely. here. Yeah, thank you for telling your story. Thank you so much. 921, we'll be back. You're watching Great Day